let me let me let me just level with you guys here on what's what's been happening. All right, I feel I feel pretty pretty uh, pretty confident we could talk about it. So I I don't know when it started, but um, it, 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 progressively I started to kind of like have it, having issues uh, outside of the stream. Now, granted, I would have issues during stream too, right? Um, but I did my best to hide that from you guys. Uh, I don't know what was wrong. I don't know what you know happened or what what the breaking point was or anything like that. All I know is that I was slowly, like basically losing my mind, I felt like. Um, every single night uh, and then Ooh. throughout most of the day, Gary, thank you so much. Um, I would be having uh, panic attacks. And I don't know why, again, uh, I, I, I try to like, I try to self diagnose and like try to figure it out myself. You guys, I mean, you guys know, like, this is, uh, that's how I how I am. Like if I feel like something's wrong, I want to try to figure out what it is. I'll do like tests on myself, you know, like let me try cutting out this. Let me try cutting out. Let me try doing this. Let me try this. I try to self-diagnose and nothing was working. Everything was leading was still resulting in me having uh literally, literally nightly, like on like like you could set a clock by it every single night. Uh the time that I was supposed to be like relaxing uh or or working on a project or something like that, I was having uh, just straight panic attacks for hours, hours at a time. I would go to bed feeling like I was going to fucking lose my mind. Um, and so like, you know, I would, I would self-medicate, like I would smoke weed and stuff like that and try to use that to help me, uh, cope. Uh, but well, but the problem with, with weed was that sometimes like 20% of the time I would be able to relax, but the other 80% of the time I would, it would make everything worse. But that 20% of the time was happening often enough, 20%, uh, that I felt like it was worth the risk, but I was paying for it on the back end. Um, and so I tried a couple times of stopping smoking, but the, again, the, the, um, the panic attacks kept happening. Um, when you guys probably didn't notice on stream, maybe some of you guys think you did, but, uh, you know, I would put all of my energy that I possibly could into the stream, but then the rest of the day I was just useless. Like I couldn't do anything. I couldn't sit down and watch TV because I felt like I was, I, I was, I felt like I was getting just like overrun with like just anxiety. Um, I couldn't, so I couldn't fucking watch TV. I couldn't, um, I couldn't really do anything. Driving was hard. Like, like there was a good period of time where driving was very difficult for me. It's just fucking driving. Um, doing anything felt like a risk. Doing anything felt like a risk. If I was, even if I was like a little too uncomfortable, if I was a little too warm, risky, might trigger something. If I was a little too cold, risky, might trigger something. Uh, so everything was like, everything was basically becoming a risk that I might, you know, have a panic attack. Um, and a lot of times I would just internalize the attack where like I probably look like I'm fine, but inside it's like just fucking turmoil. Um, and so I decided to, uh, I started seeing like other people like Bloody Faster and, uh, and Pocket and other streamers, mostly women, because I don't think men talk about this very much. Um, <clears throat> mostly women just talking about how they're going to therapy and they're very open about it. They go to therapy, they go to do all this stuff. Um, and I was like, I need to do that because I started reaching a breaking point where I started to have thoughts that were just very uncharacteristic of myself, not suicidal or anything, but just like giving up. You know, and it was once that started happening, I was like, okay, I have to do something because nothing I'm doing is working. Um, and so like, just as an example, after I had the coronavirus, I had like lasting like brain fog issues. And I also had like a lasting issue with like my heart, like rapidly just like going off, just like, just pulse, just going just crazy. Um, and was, of course, of course that triggers a reaction and so then the reaction happens which does what it keeps it going and so like every little thing that would happen after i had the rona would basically become a huge deal and i couldn't cope um i had an honest discussion with jen and i was like you know what do you like what do you how do you see me now versus how i was and she she said that she was she hears me laughing up here uh and she wishes that she could have that back again because I was always a cheerful guy, right? I was always a cheerful guy. She called me her Manx, right? Um, 
but I wasn't that anymore. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't help myself. I couldn't help her. Um, and so I, I started looking for, you know, it got to the point again, like, you know, these like weird thoughts that I, I, I guess you classify as depression, um, or whatever. I don't know what, um, started like kind of popping in my head and I couldn't, cope with that so uh and i didn't want to allow that to continue i at that point i was like i can't solve this on my own i need to get some help and of course inspiration from people like pocket people like bloody faster how they say it helps them and it's like okay maybe i need that too like these are other people that are in the same are in the same like you know career that i am right we're in front of cameras every day you know this is not like you know dealing with stress and then just i'm gonna sit on the couch and relax like that's not part of my job you know i have to get in front of you guys and we have, i have to talk and i have to try to keep you know keep an energy you know throughout a stream um and they're dealing with the same thing that i was dealing with but they're getting help and i was like what the fuck's stopping me from getting help so i started looking um so I, I, I talked to my doctor and I told her what was happening. And this is around the time I started testing my blood pressure too, by the way. Right. And I noticed it was really high. Um, and so I, she started me on blood pressure meds. And once the blood pressure went down, I think I made a joke before. And I was telling you guys, I was like, now I was like, now when I have an anxiety attack, like my body doesn't know how to react because my blood pressure is so low now. Right. <laughs> Like that was a joke, but I mean, it re I mean, it was true. Like, you know, I still would have anxiety attacks, um, but they just, they just, uh, they hit different. You know, it still was like, you know, menacing, mentally menacing, uh, but it was still, uh, you know, but it was still occurring. And so I talked to the doctor and she suggested, like, we, I went through the whole survey thing and all this stuff. So she just suggested two things, one therapy uh, and two, um, uh, uh, Selexa, which is like a, a SSRI, which is a, uh, um, think of it kind of like Molly, but like a drip, right? Like Molly will just like dump all of your serotonin at once. Uh, and, and SSRIs or antidepressants will basically like just drip a little, little bit more out than you're used to or whatever. Just kind of keep it, kind of keep you a little bit more positive, balanced, chemically balanced. Um, so I started taking it. There was a little bit of, um, there was a little bit of, uh, uh, what is it called? Um, just like some difficulty with the with the side effects and so i had like you know these like panic attacks that are like happening because of the new side effects that were happening and again at the same time because i um because i uh my blood pressure was lower like considerably lower regularly my body was having a new reaction to everything everything feels different right walking donut felt different any anything that had anything to do with my heart whether i'm relaxing or whether i'm reacting to something everything felt different um so of course for me different was a trigger and so while i'm waiting for the selexa to take place and the blood pressure is down all that stuff it was like all these new emotions and everything and all these like trying to like cope with stuff i had like good days i had bad days i had you know great days finally and then i had oh, then i started having good days instead of bad days um and now like i have like i mean i have like a mood thing that i that i uh, uh my old work buddy uh, shelia she suggested this mood app called dailyo d-a-y-l-i-o uh and every day at the same time it asks me how i'm doing and i've just been plugging it in and just ignoring it plug it in and ignore it and lately i've had um the past like three weeks or so uh or two weeks i've had like so many rad days in a row rad is like the top one um and just a couple of good days you know which is like what i qual i qualify that as like one like anxiety related issue but that's not necessarily lasting enough where it ruins the day um whereas before it was like you know just one shitty day after another and then maybe a good day but not a rad day so that's where i'm at right now um you know i'm i'm like three and a half weeks or so into or maybe four weeks into selexa it still has time it still needs more time to like propagate uh, in, in terms of like, you know, I don't know if propagation is the right word, but, uh, <laughs> but you guys know what that means at least. Uh, and once, once I'm like, you know, once I'm like six weeks in, that should be like where I kind of go, like where I kind of cruise. So like, I'm already feeling great. I've been feeling great for like two and a half weeks. And I've only been on the meds for like about four weeks, I think. Um, yeah, four weeks now. Uh, and so it's like, I feel like, I feel like I am who I used to be, if that makes sense. You know, like I, I, I recognize this person I, to you again, to you guys on stream. Like I put all my energy into, it. even when I was falling apart, I put all my energy into streams. Um, 
but now I, I know that I could do this and then I could, I could go and do something else afterwards. And I don't feel like I've expended all of my mental energy just to have a good stream. And there's nothing left for my wife or my kid. So, so that's where I'm at. I basically, I got help. Um, and they put me on drugs and I told her, I, was, I told her initially, I was like, I don't want to be on drugs for like the rest of my life. Um, and she said, it's going to be a minimum of six months, but probably 18 months. And at first I was like, oh, I don't want to be on this for 18 months. But now that I, now, now that I'm feeling this, I understand like she, like you have to be on this thing long enough to basically forget what you had become. Uh, and a therapist is going to help you with this as well. Right. Uh, so she, I talked to her once. I have another, another uh, appointment uh, tomorrow morning. Um, I have a school appointment tomorrow afternoon, by the way, so I won't be here. Um, but uh, I'm scheduling them in the mornings and stuff so every two weeks. So that way I could talk to her and just, uh, I don't know, just, it just, I don't know what it was. The first meeting was just us talking, right? Just bullshitting. Um, she gave me like a meditation app to use. Right. And I was just like, at that point I was like, I will try anything. If, if even if it's meditating, sitting there just like, or whatever, like I'll do anything to not become, to not go back to what I was a month ago and what I'd been for the past year. But obviously there's a lot of stressors that definitely egg this on, right? Like Declan's homeschooling, Jen's home all the time. Uh, you know, we have zero privacy. Um, you know, and, and, and I know you guys can relate to this. I already see you guys in the, in the chat. Like there's a lot of, uh, um, comments about people who could relate to this stuff. Uh, and you know, it, it has the same impact on me too. You know, it's, it's, it's stress. It's stress. It's a lot of stress. Uh, and then on top of that, it's like, I'm trying to do the photography thing. I'm trying not to catch the coronavirus again. Right. Um, I'm trying to, you know, stream and I got to be in front of the camera every day and like be happy. <laughs> uh, and now, you know, again, like now four weeks in, uh, and I feel normal, you know, I feel happy. You know, and if and, and if, if I have to take medicine like this for fucking years to feel like this, fucking fine. Um. So what are the side effects of the drug? I see kittens talking about uh, ED, erectile dysfunction. Uh, I could tell you, I could tell you that uh, I don't have those issues. And I'm not just saying that because, you know, I'm on stream or something like that. Right. Uh, I, I, th I thought about that, too, but I don't have those issues because. I will say though, that stress and anxiety that I had before was preventing me from getting into any kind of like, I mean, I like anything, but even, even if we're being honest with each other, even masturbation was a chore. Okay. Now, now that the, 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 the cloud has been lifted, right now it's, I'm so much more relaxed. I'm not stressed out to just jerk off. Right. Um, so it's it's yeah that's not a problem now I, i've read that that's a problem for some folks which i mean that's that sucks but you know there's different types of drugs out there that maybe has a different result um fab again <laughs> see boners all the time now for mike easy <laughs> this is very related to brain fog as well you know the the brain fog i think it subsided entirely um it is. I. I mean. I think. I. I have like. I have like a weird like dizziness because of the blood pressure meds. But I mean, again, I'll deal with that. The. It's. It's like. It's like the coronavirus and the vaccine. It's people like. It, like. Do you want the soreness and maybe oh maybe I'm a little achy the next day from getting the vaccine or do you want ten days of fucking trash? You know, like sometimes. Sometimes like the 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 medicine is just going to be better, even if you have like for me, like I, there's some gastrointestinal issues like where I, I feel like I'm farting like all the time. I feel like uh, uh, if I eat, you know, too much sugar, then uh, my stomach gets really upset. And I used to be able to just down a bunch of cookies. No problem. Now it's like my stomach's pissed for like two days straight. Um, so there is there is some like, uh, you know, some internal processing issues that you kind of come you got to work with. And to be honest, it's great to hear someone else talk about this stuff. Uh, kind of like we're not alone, you know? Yeah, that that's what I was thinking when I saw Bloody Faster and uh, Pocket talking about this shit. Um, it's just like, yeah, it's, it's, 
you know, I know not, I know not a lot of men talk about it, and I, I get it. You know, like I, 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 I get why societal pressures of being a man, fucking suck it up and drive on, right? Like I get it, I totally get it. But you know, I've, I've never really, um, you, I mean, you guys know I'm not like that. I like to assess things myself first like when it comes to this kind of stuff like i always almost always open up to you guys about stuff that i'm dealing with after the fact right like after when i when i feel like i have a grasp on it then i'll be a little bit more open about it um but i don't necessarily um talk about my problems as they're happening like i, I feel like right now i feel like i'm kind of like getting a hold of it um i but i but i but before i would like joke about anxiety things before but I wouldn't really lay it out for you guys like I am today. Um, so yeah, so that's where I'm at. <laughs> I know you guys are going through the same thing and you know what? Now that I, now that I am like, you know, I don't know, containing it or dealing with it or whatever. Um, I see these tweets from people and I want to tell them like, dude, get help. You know, like, this this is what works like this has worked for me it might work for you i know i know it's not for everybody right and not specifically selexa there might be prozac that's like you were saying there's other types of drugs that could help you um and also therapy right and i know therapy is hard it's easier to get drugs than it is to get therapy i know i know um but at least explore the option and see what you can do like i didn't even we didn't even know if therapy was covered under insurance i just took i just did the first session and then waited until the insurance came um but but you can just call usually on the back of your card there's like a mental health number or maybe you call a number on the back of your health card and they'll tell you where uh, who they'll support they went through the same thing, same feeling. I ended up on the site called ZocDoc, and it made a doctor find, made finding a doctor pretty easily. Yeah, there are some sites that can help you out with that, in like terms of finding help, getting help, and all that. So I went through therapy and didn't need drugs. Everyone's different. Yeah, everyone's different. Yeah, exactly. Like you might you might not need drugs. You might just need therapy, and that's it. Uh, now I don't I can't vouch for therapy because I'm only, I've only been in for like you know one one session. Um, so. I can't really vouch for that. Uh, I, I can just tell you that, uh, um, that, you know, I'm going to keep, I'm going to stick to it. And I'm, cause I'm at the point where like, I, I need to fix it. Like I said, once I started getting like these thoughts that I couldn't really explain that felt very uncharacteristic of myself. Um, I was like, that's the, that's the line. Like I, I can't, like, I'm clearly not able to fix this myself. I need to get help. Um, and yeah, yeah. So that's it. 